Okay, since I did the Amish friendship bread, I thought we might go ahead and talk about the starter part of it. The recipe that I printed off that I kind of refer to when I'm making my bread, like I told you, I've been doing this for 20 years. Most of it's up in my head. Um, it will tell you to put, I think this one says, yeah, this one starts with a cup. Um, a cup of flour, all-purpose flour, one cup of sugar, one cup of milk. Now, I use, totally went out of my head, I use whole milk, I use uh, an unbleached sugar, and I use... King Arthur, there we go, flour. If you want to use different brands, more power to you. This is what I use and what I like. So, yeah, I, I think this is Moringa. I, you can get it at Kroger Sugar. I take it out of the bag because it comes in a flimsy little plastic bag. And I put it in my big, huge, my big half gallon mason jar. And that's how it works. Okay. Now what you do if you're using a bag, I quit using bags years ago because you can quickly go through a whole lot of plastic bags and well, it's not really sustainable and it can add up to a whole lot of money quickly. What you do, I'm gonna use these notes and I'm also gonna tell you once you do this, what people tend to, not tell people that are just getting into doing stuff like this is how forgiving stuff is. Okay. Um, on the first day, you mix it together. Okay. Then from days two to five, you just squeeze the bag and let the air out. Me, I use mason jars. Okay. But you want to come by of course, mix them, but you want to come by, hear that? You want to come by and burp them because as it's fermenting, it's building up air. And they will, um, see, that one, that one doesn't have as much. They will spew all over your kitchen, which is also why I quit using plastic bags because they will, this one needs fed badly, they will, um, make a huge mess and they will other reason why I stopped using these too much pressure in it they'll pop open and in the middle of the night you hear a loud pop <laughs> and then you've got a mess to clean up and cleaning up starter off of wherever it goes is a mess I mean it goes everywhere Anyway, the ideal behind using this bag is that on your baking day, um, because you've gone through, it's a 10-day cycle. Once you go through the 10-day cycle, um, let's see. This one on your baking day, that I've, I've done it differently, so it doesn't, it, it's... That's what I keep telling people about how forgiving starters are. This one, um, on your baking day, you feed it, divide it, and bake it. Um, I've done it both ways. I prefer not to feed on the day that I'm going to bake. Either way will work. Um, I show you because I have different starters that I can show you. Um, if you're doing this and you're using plastic bags, the purpose of that is whenever you divide on your baking day, you print out the recipe and whoever you give the bread to, you also give them a packet, a little baggie with the starter in it so they can bake themselves. It's kind of like um, a baking chain letter. That's the only thing that I can think of to compare it to. But um, 
I'm going to go through because I'm going to do a couple of more loaves and that's going to be for today because I'm not killing myself doing this. I'm just trying to get it down to a more manageable level because I generally don't give my starters away. I usually bake them all. And when I start winding it down, I just, instead of feeding the full cup, because I do cup, I do a cup. That's how I've been doing it for, since I first got the first recipe. Um, when I start winding it down, I start feeding my starters like a half a cup. It works. It'll be fine. Do you see this? This is a, the sign of a hungry starter. Um, this particular starter is named Joy. All of my starters have a name. Whether it's a sourdough starter or a sweet starter or Amish friendship bread starter. All of them have a name. The reason being, it helps me remember who, you know, like I have my sister and her children. It helps me remember the order of how I split them up because I don't give a starter away. And if you don't give a starter away, let me tell you, if you're not actively baking every single week or at, at that 10 day point, start, you're going to have a multiple of starter. You can take a cup of starter, put it in the freezer, and it'll be fine. You pull it back out when you're ready to bake, let it get to room temperature. Feed, you can either feed it or just use that starter. It'll work fine, okay? Um, but anyway, this one will get all of the all of the starters that I have are going to get stirred down. I'm going to feed a very minimal amount because I'm trying to use these up. This one will get switched into probably a smaller container. It'll get stirred down. I'll put a fourth of a cup of milk, sugar and flour into it to feed it so that it can be okay for the next couple of days because it may take a couple of days to get to it. Um, this is one that's ready to bake. Um, once it hits that day, your baking day, then you can bake off of, you can bake it all up. You don't have to continue to keep the starter. And in this, in the case that I'm at, because I fell, I got sick and th stuff happened. Um, so I have a ton of it, but it's simple, okay? If I were going to continue, I'm not going to continue baking eight loaves of bread or more a week um, because I just don't have the time at this point in time. We're going into um, a busy, busy season. So you hear the Omni. It's just telling me that the bread is done. Um going into a very, very busy season, and I need to wind this down because before I know it, it's, I need to wind it down to like one small starter that I can bake maybe a loaf or two a week. Um, it's going to wind down with other things that I need to do. Now, this is sweet Amish friendship bread starter. This is not regular sourdough starter. Okay, we'll cover that. Um, you can see this one needs stirred down. It could use a feeding. You see this line starting to come through? That's what's called hooch. Happens with anything that you ferment. Okay, um, some people say to pour it off. Some people say stir it in. I stir it in. As long as there's not any signs of mold, any signs of, you know, ick, you're good. Now, when you open this, you're going to know. Um, you're going to be able to tell by how your starter smells. And most of the time, you don't even have to get that close to it to smell the right, the smell that you're looking for. Now, I do change my jars periodically. Um, just before I handle, actually handle, handle anything, I'm going to wash my hands again. I just haven't because doing this. I'm going to check like this one where it's been fuller. There's goop around the top. So once it, it'll get it put into, over into a clean jar, I just pulled it out of the dishwasher. 
it will go over into a big a plain jar. I do that every so often because you don't want the top of the lid to get nasty or mold or whatever because then your whole starter is junk. Anyway, this is going on, I can't tell, about 10, 11 minutes. I'm going to deal with these. And, and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to stir them down. The ones that need fed, like this one, will get fed. The bulk of them probably will not or will get fed a minimum, like maybe an eighth cup. Just enough to keep them going for a day or two or a few more days until I can get them baked up because I don't want to just I don't want to throw out perfectly good starters and I'm not going to fill my freezer full I've done it before I'm not going to fill my freezer full of just starters but it, it's really not hard um, whether you use mason jars or plastic bags it's not hard it just lives on your counter you smoosh it around every day um, gonna tell you if you're doing the smooshy um, if you got some frustration, whatever, good way to get rid of it. That's what got me into making this type of bread because I started making it after I got hurt at work and that it was therapeutic to do with my hands and it was therapeutic. It helped relieve the tension in my neck. So, um, that's all that I can really give you information wise. If you have a question, leave it below in the comments. We'll address it. Um, starters are a whole lot more forgiving than what people, what I'm, what I'm seeing people say um, on some posts on other social medias. Um, like I said, 20 years. You can also dehydrate these. Am I going to dehydrate them? No. <laughs> no. I don't have time for the, to do that right now. Um, it's easier for me to bake it down. Um, I've got all the ingredients to bake it down, give it to, gift it to people, and be on about my way. Anyway, so that's all that I've got. Y'all have a great day. Remember, I'm the mayor's daughter. I love y'all so very much. See you in the next video. Okay, less than ideal situations, but I decided I'd show you, since I'm going to switch this one over, I'm gonna, and I decided to go with a half a cup. I don't, basically, I need to use up the milk that I have, so, yeah, we're going to do that. I'm What I'm going to do, let me show you, and I just did this backwards, so I'm going to have to stop this and find another measuring cup, because I put my liquid in first, but anyway... What we're going to do, I've, I've stirred this up. This is the one that I showed you. This was Joy. Um, I showed you it needs fed. Okay? Um, you can see that, like, brownish line that you saw, that liquid, it mixes right back in there. You're good. What I'm going to do is put a half a cup of milk. Hang on. Hang tight. I'm going to put this on the right one. I'm going to put half a cup of flour. Now, if this was your starter that you were starting, the recipe says to use a cup. Okay? So, remember, I'm, at, I'm feeding this existing starter, but I'm trying to wind them down. So, I can't bake 9-11 loaves of bread today. So, <laughs> hang on. I went ahead and added the half a cup of sugar because I wasn't paying attention and forgot to turn the camera back on. But you can see, and you can see kind of if this was going to be your starting starter, this is pretty much what you got. Um, this on the sides kind of will go down on its own, and it's going to bubble. Just like any other starter, it's going to bubble up, and it's going to do its thing. What we're going to do... Technically, this is a feed because, yes, that's what its original intention is, is a feed. So, I'm going to take this spatula out. Now, what I've learned to do is have a little something close by to put your spatula in when you're doing this because otherwise, it's going to get real messy real quick. But what we're going to do is to switch this out of this jar into this one. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay. 
wash and have to pour this the rest of the way. Can you see inside the jar? Can you see that rim where it's bubbled up? That is why I change every so often. Some people change their starters over into a different container more often than I do. Um, I use mine quite often, so it's kind of usually a non-issue. But whenever I see that getting thick on the sides, um, I change it to a new one. Run this one through the dishwasher. Boom, we're done. But we're going to let this finish. Then I'm going to give this a good stir, set it back on the counter, and I'm going to show you this is where we're at. And this is in a half a gallon jar, which is why we are trying to not, we're trying, I'm trying to get all this handled and baked down. So anyway, that is Amish Friendship Bread Starter. All I got to tell you on it. Now, with this, with these that are ready to bake, I'll feed it today. I probably won't feed it again. I may, I'll burp, I'll burp it, uh, which is unscrewing the lid, letting the air off of it. Um, may stir it, but I probably won't feed it again until I bake. That's because I'm trying to use it up. If I were going to keep the rotation going, then I would feed it more. Okay. I hope I've made that clear as mud. Y'all have a great day. Remember, I'm the mayor's daughter. We love you.